We found big news in tiny details of the latest episode of Kenobi. Don't worry, we won't spoil the show for you, but make sure to stay until the end if you want to find the origins of this Star Destroyer we see in Force Awakens. In today's video, we'll be examining the implications of these previous Legends characters making their official debut into Disney's canon, all thanks to just carvings in one wall. But with that all said and done, let's dive right into the video. So in the beginning half of the new episode, we see Kenobi yet again approaching a wall, seeing all the Jedi names being etched into it. We saw this previously in episode 3, Eckhart's Ladder and our Clips channel has covered it extensively but we see it again in episode 5. And there's a lot more names to be discovered this time around too. We'll start with the largest, most prominent name we found, Corin Shelby. Corin was a young college student during the Empire's reign at University Mount Celestin who helped tutor him. In time, his tutor would reveal he's actually Jedi Master Darren Arcanian. Master Arcanian believed it was his duty to train the young man in an attempt to restore the Jedi Order. As young Shelby was trained, his powers were matched only by his aggressive nature. This did worry his master in some capacity. However, on a mission to locate other Jedi, the pair were discovered by the Empire. Whilst his master did evade capture, Padawan Corin was not so lucky. He was quickly captured by the Imperial forces, and when Corin arrived to be interrogated, it was revealed his entire family had also been captured by the Empire. The Padawan could not save his parents as they were executed, and only his sister would be re-educated by the Internal Security Bureau. When Corin would not reveal his master's location, he would be turned over to the Inquisitors on Coruscant, where he would be tortured. After two weeks of said torture, Master Arcanian arrives for his Padawan, but does not survive the ordeal. The Jedi Master was struck down by an Inquisitor, and Corin was only able to escape because he used his rage to defeat the aforementioned Inquisitor. Since that day, he is still haunted by the steps he took to survive. He would go on to be a highly respected agent in the Rebel Alliance and even led a successful sabotage mission aboard the second Death Star. And all of this was in one Star Wars short story comic called Dark Vendetta, which released in 1996. Next on the list is another Force sensitive with an even deeper relationship with the dark side. Her name was Roganda Ismarin. Roganda was a Jedi initiate along with her brother before the Purge. They were kept safe through their master for a time, but eventually were captured and re-educated by Inquisitors. Following her witnessing the execution of her brother, she vowed to be powerful enough to never suffer the same fate. Upon surviving re-education, Roganda integrated herself in Imperial High Society. She was so successful, even Emperor Palpatine had her become his mistress. She would eventually become one of the Emperor's Hands, a collection of the most gifted agents in the Empire. She would eventually bear a son, though not Palpatine's, and train him into the dark side. During the growth of her son, she would plot to instill him as the new Emperor. Next, Drake Logan. He was a Padawan during the Clone Wars and a veteran swordsman. During Order 66 on Fluusha, Drake witnessed clones turn on Jedi Masters simultaneously from a monitor along with two other Padawans. Almost immediately, the Padawans received a message ordering all Jedi to return to Coruscant. Unaware of what was truly happening, they arrived on Coruscant only to discover the atrocity in person. To survive, the Padawans hid in the city's underworld. For money, the 13-year-old Drake joined the Commission for Preservation of the New Order. His job was to uphold and enforce the values of the Empire. He would eventually abandon this position, causing the Inquisitors and Darth Vader himself to uncover the Jedi's origins. Quick side note though, besides Mace Windu, he is the only Jedi we know to wield a purple lightsaber. And before we get into the last, and in my opinion, the most exciting discovery, we should note that we also found Tiberius Underlock and Drun Carwick etched into the walls. Whilst not much is known about Anderlock, he was recognized for his exceptional fighting pilot skills. Drun Karik, on the other hand, was barely a Padawan during the Purge. How he survived is as of yet unclear, but what is certain is that he fled to his homeworld of Ardalon. Eventually, he led the Rebellion of Adlan. 
although it was unsuccessful and he was captured and sent to the prison world of Jesserol as a result. He would continue to organize his fellow prisoners in hopes of a prison break. Lastly, and most importantly, the revelation of a new Inquisitor. Whilst his name was not directly mentioned, it could possibly be a new threat to the Grand Inquisitor. High Inquisitor Antinius Tremaine is outranked only by the Grand Inquisitor Vader and Palpatine himself. High Inquisitor Antinius Tremaine is not only tasked with the capture of both previously mentioned Corin Shelve and Drake Logan, he is pivotal to their journey away from the dark side of the Force. Had these Jedi not encountered the High Inquisitor, it's possible they would not have realized the dangers of straying from the light. After killing Corrin's master, Antinius Tremaine would be caught off guard by the ferocity of the grieving Padawan. This resulted in significant injuries, requiring the use of cybernetics to survive. After his defeat at the Blade of Corrin, he would be given control of the Star Destroyer dubbed the Interrogator, in order to root out hidden rebel cells. This Star Destroyer would be disabled at the Battle of Jakku, causing it to crash into the planet's desert, which you can see Rey scavenge through at the beginning of the sequel trilogy's The Force Awakens, only strengthening the possibility that this Inquisitor might be canon. But what are your opinions on this newly revealed info? Whilst many of these Jedis and stories might not be canonized just yet, just the fact that these Jedis exist gives the big possibility of these stories being reintroduced and retold. But I'm curious which one you would like to see in the form of a novel, comic book, or even in a TV series. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on that in the comments down below. I read all of them, and I'll try to get back to some of you as well. But besides that, guys, I have been Charlie, you've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.